Good evening, everyone. It's Thupper the Rabbit Rabbit. We're getting close to Halloween, so let's get spooky. Uh, one thing that we can do is play with lights for Halloween, and user Spades from YouTube wanted to know how to make two lights uh, alternate back and forth. Uh, and some of you have seen a way to do this already if you watched my lighthouse video, which is actually on my old channel, but I'll I'll link it in the description. Uh, it's the thing that's in the intro and outro that I use. But, there's actually an easier way to do it if all you want is two lights. So let me show you. First you start with the rusty clock still, so let's spill rusty clock real quick here. If you're not familiar with rusty clock, you just take a timer, a blocker, and a branch. Oh, I don't see any other... How about two of these? That'll help me with power supplies. What you do is you take a little bit of the power, you stick it clock, sorry, timer, and then you take the output from the timer, you put it into the blocker, take the output of the blocker, you put it into this branch, you take the output of the branch, you bring it back to the toggle on on the timer, and what that does, it, and I'll go ahead and, uh, oops, Oh, I gotta have power on here before I can set it. Uh, whatever interval you set this to is how often it'll block itself. So if you want to make a rusty clock, you just set this to one second, power this up, and it'll block itself every one second cycle and trigger itself again. So it just goes tick, 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 tick once a second. Um, I'm gonna take some power out of here. I'll do a, a schematic for this also. Um, and since I'll have a one second pulse coming out of here, uh, in the lighthouse video, that went down a string of branches and counters in order to do a sequence of eight lights that all triggered for one second each. Um, the tower video used something similar for uh, some light sequencing effects as well. Uh, in this case, since we're only trying to do two lights, we're going to use a component I didn't have available at that time. Um, well, the memory cell was available, but it didn't have this, the toggle input. So what I'm gonna do is just take this one second pulse here and I'm gonna attach it to the toggle input, which means every time this cycles over, once a second, it's just gonna go bing, 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 back and forth between inverted output and output. And that'll alternate between these two lights. Or if you had strings of lights, it would alternate between the two strings of lights. So. Uh, easy peasy lemon squeezy you can do this just by uh, having this go back and forth between the memory cell outputs so let me set the timer to one second and as soon as we fire this off uh, whoops wait what did I do that oh shoot I don't have enough power coming out of here one two three five ought to do it there we go okay so now we're sending our one second pulse. I'm going to take some power off here. So now we powered up our uh, memory cell and you can see it's flipping on, off, off, or on, off. So I'll hook this up to this light, hook this one up to this light, and there you go. A, B, one, two, left, right. You get the idea. Uh, if you want to do more than two lights, if you want to sequence them, uh, you could do it like I did in the lighthouse video. I also think there's probably a better way to do that um, with some combination of these memory cells. I um, haven't really played with that yet, but I'm betting I could make it work a little bit differently there. Um, but with the counters in use, it's a kind of an extensible solution. Like the lighthouse used eight, you could use pretty much as many as you want up to the maximum of the counter um, and the maximum of the timer and I honestly don't remember what the maximum interval on the timer is right now but uh, you could probably have like you know 50 or 100 lights in sequence if you wanted to so this is the way to do it um, stand by for one moment I'll do a cutaway here to the schematic alright here we are on the schematic um, 
it's exactly what I just built on the wall, almost the same way I built it on the wall. So I'll provide a link to this as well. Again, power is just coming in to this branch, enough to come up here and run the, uh, the blocker to the block itself. That's what creates our rusty clock here. Have those five units of power coming in, so it's enough to run the timer trigger, uh, this branch, and then one unit left over to trigger the toggle on the memory cell. And then I just split the rest of this power off to run through the memory cell to run the lights. Um, it's uh, got 66 left over there from, from this particular windmill environment at the moment, so you could run a whole ton of lights. All depends on your power supply, of course. So there you have it. Uh, spades, 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 whatever you, I don't know. Not good at your name pronunciations on YouTube, but here, here this is what you were asking for, I think, with two lights going back and forth. Nice, simple, fun build, uh, gets to use a couple cool components. And again, if you wanted to have more stations, I will link the lighthouse video. It explains, uh, without a schematic, unfortunately, how to extend this into a solution that can have many stations of lights that all run in sequence, all based off of the same rusty clock timer system. So there you go. Good luck, and don't spooky suck.